So the college farm is a commercial farm in its own right, but it also has this second um, purpose, and that is to educate young people in the southeast of England about agriculture. So we need to provide them with the best facilities to learn. And our old unit was tired, was coming to the end of its lifespan. And so the college's investment in this new unit will help our students to experience the latest technology and also to experience how pig farming is done on larger units across the country. I think you, as a college farm, we've got a duty to show students a range of enterprises and it's just a, it's a good commercial income for us, but it also gives us that extra animal husbandry. And we're not just a college about agriculture, we're a college about looking after animals and a pig unit has a regular turnover of animals that's available for other students. So some of the students coming from schools and also learning about animal care. So, and veterinary science, so it also has a, a, you know, many other functions through, throughout the college. So traditionally we would have had um, a farm information room, now it's all stored digitally on, our, uh, on a central location on computers, so lecturers and students can get access to that throughout the college, so it doesn't matter if it's an agricultural student doing a project, that information is also available for veterinary nursing students or students learning about biology or animal care. So as part of a wider agri-food project within the college, um, a butchery training centre has been constructed, well, a meat processing centre has been constructed, and it's going to train apprentices from the southeast of England in butchery. That can also be used to process meat from the college estate, and that can also be sold through our One Guard and Brighton retail network as well. The principal expects high standards throughout the college, and we've got to show students best practice throughout the college farm, they can relate to that and take it away having learned, you know, been here on weekly, weekly stock routines or actually doing practicals with lecturers. It's always got to be, you know, best practice. Um, so there's lots of innovation. Uh, we, we don't normally have to hand feed the sows. The sows are self-feeding in the farrowing house. Um, we use an electronic tag which identifies the sow throughout the system and that um, is used to feed them in the dry cell and the farren house. So basically we, uh, the sales restrained for the first few days up to farren and after farren and then at that point we open the crate up and she's allowed to, uh, she's able to turn round. Um, the crates are bigger than traditional crates and the, the floor area is a lot bigger as well. So traditionally we'd use a dry feed, a pellet. Um, we now use a small transition feeder, which is a mixture of pellets and water, which creates a, a porridge for them. So that helps gut health and um, get them ready for weaning. Normally you would use a traditional heat lamp, infrared lamp, um, but these have got a heat pad, which is a, a ceramic one as opposed to a plastic one. Um, and they're heated to 36.5 degrees for the piglets. So, so currently the sows are fed four times a day, but I have control over when they're fed. They have a set ration for a day and they can um, eat basically when they want to. They, there's, a, there's a little activator on the crate so they push up and down and that lets, them, lets the machine know that they're hungry and it feeds them whenever they want. So it's on demand feeding. So we're currently going to start sexing and sizing, well sexing pigs certainly, they haven't done it here before so we're going to do males and females and to see how that works. Um, probably be less stressed for girls um, because boars have a habit of riding the sails and the gilts as well.